week I talked to you guys um, about what I called the mice quotient. And someone asked me if I could expand on that. Um, so the mice quotient, mace quotient, lace quotient, as I will call it, because I don't like the word milieu because it confuses me. I'm going to talk about it. So lace is an acronym with each letter representing a different type of plot. Um, the first plot is uh, the location style plot. And this plot begins with a character entering a place and it ends when they leave said place. Uh, examples of that are like the Hobbit leaving on an adventure and then coming back. Uh, it doesn't, I, I think last time I said it, it involves coming back, but it doesn't have to be a there and back again kind of story. If the character ends up in a different place at the end, that's fine too. It's kind of like a journey. Um, I'm trying to think of an example here, but like my mind keeps going to like Dora the Explorer. Like, I don't know why, but honestly, this is like, the simplified version of that plot where it's like, oh, I am starting here and I want to go there. That's the location style plot. It's all based around where characters are and where we are going. The A in lace stands for answer. Answer style plots are about finding the answer to a question. The perfect example for this is Sherlock Holmes and other mysteries. It starts with a question like, who done did this murder? And ends with, oh, it, 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 that dude, that dude did the murder. Okay, pretty simple. The third plot is the character plot. And this one is kind of like the plot that I think most people are familiar with. It starts with a character that isn't happy with some aspect of themselves. And it ends when they are either at peace with said aspect or change it into something they like better. Um, and the final one, the E, is event story. This is when an event occurs that disrupts the status quo. And this plot ends when either a new status quo is established or when the old one is restored. It, it can be as small as a character moving to a new city like in Mean Girls. Or the plot event can be as large as Dark Lord returning to power and ruining life as we know it. How do you use this to make a better story? First and foremost, I love this plotting method because it works really well if you don't like to outline. It allows you to look at your initial plot points and better visualize the endings and the middle bits. Uh, speaking of which, uh, what about the middle bits? I only really mentioned the beginnings and ends, so let's get into the middles here. Uh, regardless of the plot style, the middle is obstacles. Lace, mice, or whatever you want to call it, will better allow you to determine the kinds of obstacles that you need. If you are writing a character plot about a goblin princess that can't make friends, a dragon battle isn't an obstacle. Okay, Obstacles are best when they directly oppose the end point. They challenge and cause change, you know? In location stories, the obstacles are things that prevent escape, prevent you from moving to that point where you want to get to. Answer stories are stopped by dead ends, false clues, and all those things that get in the way of finding the answer. Uh, character struggle is usually against their flaw, uh, and in event plots, the plot is stirred further by, like, you thought what well, that was bad? Well, joke's on you because now the Dark Lord has dragons sort of thing. It just keeps getting worse and worse and more disruptive, okay? And, and that's sort of how the middle works, is you build up these different obstacles that are at odds with the plot point you're trying to reach at the end. But... Uh, most stories don't really deal with a single element. So what does that do to the story? It's pretty simple, but also kind of not simple. Um, basically, each plot you begin closes in the opposite order that they began in. It's like HTML code. Um, I'll show you an example right here. But yeah, this is sort of like how it opens. So I have like the proper form and one that is improper. So let's go over like what this proper form kind of reads as and maybe that'll help you understand it more, uh, a little more. So the story reads, uh, a character is upset with an aspect of themselves. They have a question. They end up in a new location. A minor question answer plot happens, a minor plot event thing happens, which which ends quickly. Um, the character escapes from the location, they find an answer to their question, and then they are comfortable with their lot in life. So that is sort of 
the building blocks of how you form these kinds of plots. You just you can have little um, mini plots, plot arcs that happen within your arcs, but you need to sandwich it all in the right order. You know, you got to have your buns on the ends. You can't just put like if you start with a bun for this, like you start with like a character plot, you can't end your story by closing the event plot. That would be like putting tomatoes on top of your bun. You don't do that. You weirdo. Okay, put your sandwich together right. Anyways, I'm sorry. I hope this helps. I I hope the visual helps because it helped me a lot to see it kind of visually represented. Yeah, it looks a lot more complex than it is, but really it gives you the freedom to make stories of different lengths, balance plots of series, and balance larger casts. Because you can put sandwiches within sandwiches as long as you close them off with the same buns, the same HTML code. As long as you keep that all intact, you're going to be fine. You can have all the mini arcs that you want. And yeah, so once you start like um, interweaving all these plots together in this confusing sandwich metaphor um then you can have a lot of fun with writing things because while the ends and the beginnings kind of need to stay intact like the structure states the middle gives you a lot more playroom and so your middle points your obstacles they can be doubled and tripled up and rolled together with the different plots so a simple example is say you have a character arc about like a scaredy cat character and then they enter a haunted house which starts up a location-based story well your obstacle might be that they are faced with a ghost that prevents them from escaping. So it's an obstacle on both fronts. It challenges their scaredy cat nature while also challenging their want to escape said location. Um, you'll see this a lot in climaxes of stories where like the obstacles are like all blended together into one super horrific obstacle smoothie, which must be overcome. The resolutions after the climax are separated more based on the different plot arcs. It could just be a sentence. It could be a. It, it could just be a, a dialogue cue. It could be a. It could be a whole page, a whole scene dealing with these different loose ends. But after the climax, after the final obstacle, you do the reverse order thing that was shown earlier. You. In the case with our haunted house, she's not going to become at peace with herself before leaving the house. She has to leave the house first because that was the last plot arc that was brought to focus. So she leaves the house and then she can finally finish her character arc. It needs to be done in the right order. Otherwise, I mean, you you can you can do it outside of order, but it's a lot more satisfying if you do it in the correct order. Um, an example of this is like the main example of this is the Lord of the Rings movies, how they have those a million endings after the climax. That's them going in and tying up all those all those plot points that were brought up earlier. They're putting the buns on all of these sandwiches. Okay. So either way, uh mice mace lace whatever you want to call it is really great for shaping stories and a great exercise to kind of get your head around this would be to go through some short stories go through some of your favorite long form media and start identifying when different plots start and where they end and sort of mapping that out um try to determine like what type of plot this is where does it start and where does it end and then making the sort of map that I showed you earlier it'll help you kind of get your mind around how this works in larger media and in shorter media and if you want to start practicing it on your own I'd really recommend that you start with short stories where you can deal with a single one of the four letters you can deal with a single type of plot and go through it and figure out how that works and then try and weave a second one in and it'll help you get your mind around it a lot easier and it'll hopefully be fun. It's really good to start small on these things because it gets out of hand really quick. It gets really fun really quick but it's good to have your like fundamentals down before you dive right into this. 
Okay. I hope that really helped you. I hope it did. I really do. I always feel like I just ramble at you guys. I think Ursula mentioned this before, but we have the we have issue one of Scourge of Nine Point on pre-order right now. You should check that in the link below because YouTube doesn't let us put links in the above quite yet. Yeah. If there's other questions that you have about writing, I probably can do you a ramble at some time. I think I'm working on putting together like a series that's more in order and more like bip 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 do it in order kind of thing. But yeah, that's 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 the future. That's future me problems. Um I don't know what to say. Goodbye.